Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have a tag video for you today and it's all about world building. If you're new to my channel and have no clue who I am, my name is Alina, I'm an author and I make videos about books and writing. Today's tag is the Author Cube world building tag. It was created by Michael Thomas and the nice Trinda e there was the person who tagged me. I will link to Trinda's channel down below along with Michael's and I will make sure to post a fresh set of questions for this tag. And if you're curious why I'm tagging, well, wait until the end of the video. Let's start with the world building tag. The first question is, name an author who is good at world building. Well, I'm going to go with the classics and with my favorite ever sci-fi writer, which is Frank Herbert. I think the world building in Dune especially is just beyond any imagination and expectation from a world created by someone in a fictional universe. Everything from social interactions to classes to political systems, religious systems and just the view on the universe and what it would all look like after, you know, our biggest fear, our war with the machines. It's just, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it, but everything is just perfect. It's so well crafted and well written that it has nothing to do with the reality we live in, yet we can find the traces in our existence that led to this potential future. Plus, the characters are amazing, the adventure is, you know, heart pounding, exciting, and it's just one of my favorite series ever. Actually, I am so taken with Dune and the concept that I actually played the Dune game when I was just starting out my gaming career and I would actually play that instead of, you know, studying and it was the year before my university exams. And uh, the first perfume I ever bought was called Dune and the only reason I bought it was, it was because it was called that. I didn't even smell it before I bought it <laughs> and it's since been my most favorite perfume ever. I still use it a lot of times and I always have a bottle, I never run out of it without replacing it. So yeah, I'm a bit of a fan girl. Moving on to the second question. Name a detail or thing in a book which functioned only to help build the world. I think it's not only about world and atmosphere, but whenever you describe the social system and the religious and political system of a world that functions more toward world building but it also touches on character development. I think other than describing the exact shape of a castle or the exact form of a mountain, everything else cannot just be part of world building. I'm trying to think, but even even the scenery can be part of character development because it leads to where they were born, why certain skills were developed and stuff like that. So I don't think there is pure world building unless you unless you want to create a world just for the world's sake and never have any characters or adventure in it, then it would work. But otherwise, it's not just world building. It plays into the overall feel and atmosphere and you know, storyline of a book. But yeah, I think if you just stick with the scenery and the shape of houses, that might be just world building. But I doubt it. Third question, do you prefer well-described characters and an underdeveloped setting or vice versa? Actually, whenever something is severely underdeveloped, it pisses me off. I mean, I love well-rounded 3D characters that grow throughout the story, but if their setting is not well described or I feel like this could be whatever era, it could work as a contemporary or a historical or something because the world is just not really there, I think that's a fail. The same goes for a really great world but unique characters are lacking, that's also annoying. So as far as I'm concerned I need the balance between the two. I get 
that some stories are more character driven than action driven but the setting and the world of either stories needs to be there, needs to be clear, needs to be dragging you into the atmosphere of the book. Fourth question, how much world building is too much world building? Well, I mentioned earlier, if you just do world building for world building sake and nothing really happens within that world and the, character do n the characters are not well rounded characters that evolve throughout the book and they're just there to showcase the world, then that's too much world building wasted on nothing. But you can take the exact same world with the exact same level of detail, add some great characters, a nice, a nice storyline and all of a sudden it's not too much world building anymore. The fifth question what book or series could benefit from more world building? Oh, well, I'm not going to give names of books or authors because I don't think that's exactly fair. It's just my personal opinion. But I find it that while in sci-fi and fantasy people take greater care in building their worlds, sometimes in contemporary or even in a lot of paranormal stories, the world is just not really there. Or the character's backstory is just like their origin is sort of an afterthought. Nothing is well explained or it just makes no sense. It's just added in there at some point because they needed to have an origin for a species. But it makes no sense to me. Because, you know, if you want to take a character and take him all the way back to medieval times, his name should sound like it could have, in a form or another, belonged in that world. If, it, if your character has the most modern name ever, that's not going to work. Do you prefer the intric intricacies of a world to be presented early on or revealed throughout the book? Well, it depends. I don't believe in info dumps unless you're really clever about it and you sort of combine it with some sort of exposition and some incipient action, I don't know. To me, it doesn't work very well when you do it like that. You should just have tidbits of world building spread out through the entire story. That works the best way because you don't bore readers who are not that interested in the description part and in the world building and they just want the characters and the action but then again your world is still there it's well developed people can be immersed into the atmosphere and you know the setting you've created so personally i don't care as long as it's well done but if you want to be successful and please as many people as you can then you know Stick with tidbits spread out throughout the story. And the last question is describe or draw your perfect world. I do not have a perfect world. I'm sorry. My perfect world does not exist anywhere and will not exist anywhere because I don't believe in perfection. It's impossible to achieve. Utopias are something I am very skeptical about but the kind of world I prefer is the kind of world that's surprising and innovative, but it feels like it could happen. You could end up living in that particular world. And it doesn't matter if it's a fantasy world or a sci-fi world that's embedded in science and technology. If I can feel like I could be there, I could be part of that, then it's a well-built setting and I will love it forever. So that's it from me for today. It's time to tag a few people and for once in my life I will be nice and will not tag someone specifically. But if you like this tag please consider yourself tagged because I'm not that nice anyway. So thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate your likes, your comments and your shares. And I will see you all next time. Bye!